If you're looking for the latest NFL news and rumors, you're in the right place. Mitchell Ryan's here from Chat Sports, ready to break down literally everything that happened here on Wednesday. And then I got three more pretty juicy stories around the Titans, the Saints, and the Minnesota Vikings. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is probably the first thing that grabbed my attention today, at least. Tua Tonga Vailoa, he is not going to be playing week three up against the Las Vegas Raiders, which means Jacoby Brissett is going to get the start, and then the backup to him is Reed Sennett. All I'm going to say is this, and I would never wish injury on anyone, but if Jacoby Brissett gets hurt, and if somehow Derek Carr gets hurt, we could have a game where it's Reed Sennett up against Nathan Peterman on an actual NFL game. That's just wild to me. What about this? We got an update on Antonio Brown. If anybody's got him in fantasy, you might want to go ahead and pay attention here. The Bucks' third wide receiver, even though he's been really good this year with six catches, 138 yards, and a touchdown. He's dealing with COVID right now, and from what it looks like, he's going to have two days, okay, two days, negative 24 hours apart, and if he does that, he's going to be eligible to play against Los Angeles. Carson Wentz, this might surprise you, more injury update on him. He doesn't have one sprained ankle. He's got two sprained ankles, and apparently, this just makes me laugh, his right ankle is the high ankle sprain, and his left is the low ankle sprain. He's still trying to say that he might have a chance to play, but I'm going to go ahead and say that there's a better chance that Harrison Graham gets a bet right than Carson Wentz ends up playing. Let's go starting week three here. It's Justin Fields. Speaking of my man, Graham, I'm excited to see what Fields is going to be able to do, the number 11 overall pick. I mean, I've been sitting here pounding on the table saying they need to start this guy. He's better than Andy Dalton. Sorry, Dad. I know you love the red rifle, but it's about damn time. I want to see Justin Fields out on that football field throwing some touchdowns for the Bears. Now, if you guys love the NFL, if you're looking for always that NFL news, rumors, whether you're driving to work, whether you're walking your dog, whether you're sitting there dropping a number two, I don't care when it is. I just want you to stay up to date. So if you're a big-time fan of the NFL, heck, we also got NBA coverage. I don't know if you guys know this. The Minnesota Timberwolves, they just fired their GM. See, look at that. I got you updated. Plus, 100% free. Go ahead and hit that big red button that says subscribe. Let's get into the latest news and rumors here around the New Orleans Saints. And I found this story kind of interesting. The Saints apparently tried trading for Stephon Gilmore, star cornerback of the New England Patriots. The reason why this is kind of interesting to me is because two weeks ago is really when this whole story surfaced, and then now it's just being brought to the attention. The reason why apparently that they didn't do it, and this is according to USA Today, Gilmore was placed on the IR, so what the Saints did is instead they traded for Roby, right? So when you think about overall some of this moves here, you're like, okay, I can kind of understand that. The reason why this is somewhat important, Marshawn Lattimore, he is now dealing with an injury. And then you also got Gardner Johnson, who's also dealing with a knee injury. So it's like, could they potentially go out and trade for Stephon Gilmore once he, once he gets off the IR? Maybe, right? I mean, that could definitely be an option considering the fact that they really, really struggled this past week. And when you look at it, Lattimore's dealing with that thumb injury. Paulson Adebo was terrible this past week. He gave up, I believe, nine catches for 90 yards and a touchdown when he was targeted 11 times. And then Bradley Roby's still more of a nickel corner. But Brian Poole, who you signed this offseason, he's hurt. Ken Crawley, he's hurt. They need bodies. One of the bodies that's already been linked to New Orleans is, in fact, Richard Sherman. So wouldn't it be kind of interesting if they're like, okay, we couldn't get Stephon Gilmore. All of our other players are hurt. Could you potentially pick up the phone, Sean Payton, and give Richard Sherman a call? I mean, when we talked about some of these teams in the offseason being very interested in him, the Saints were by far one of the teams that showed the most interest. And I think Sherman would be a good fit in New Orleans. He said in the past that he would be open to joining this team. So even though they had a bad week two game, I don't think you can throw away what they did in week one. And what they did in week one was with a healthy team. Hey, I'd say right now if I was New Orleans, I'd like pick, pick up the phone and give them a call. But here's two options, right? Because this is what we do at Chat Sports. We give you guys options, and I want you to really think about what you would do. Would you rather trade for Stephon Gilmore right now, knowing that he's going to be out the first six weeks of the season? So basically, you got to go another, what, four weeks? Or would you rather go out and see Sign Richard Sherman. So you can either type Stephon Gilmore, SG, or you can type RS for Richard Sherman. 
Now, I got one heck of a deal going on right now, so pay attention. If you like betting on NFL games, if you want to bet on college football, hell, uh, you could probably even bet on the UFC fight this weekend if you're interested in that. I want you to go to chatsports.com slash bet. What you're going to get is 125% deposit bonus. I promise you this. It is the best deal on the Internet. So if you deposit $100, you're going to get $125 for free to bet with. Yeah, that's serious amount to change. So you got to go to this link below, chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code NFL Daily. It's going to get you that 125% deposit bonus. And if that's not good enough, what I got on tap here is this. If you go ahead and make at least a $5 bet, this is for new BetUS customers only. We're going to hook you guys up with a new NFL jersey. So you got a free jersey. If you have any questions whatsoever on how to get that, you can email us, jersey at chatsports.com. But again, it is for only new BetUS users, and you have to use the link, chatsports.com slash bet, and you got to use the promo code NFL Daily. That way we get credit. So we're also going to hook you up, though, with the jersey. Now, some of these people out here at Chatsports, we got 15 people. It's just so many guys here at the team anymore, and we're doing a fun, friendly competition of some of these bets. I don't know if you guys see me right here. I'm 5-5. Five and five. If you guys could send me some of the bets that you guys are going to do this week, I'm going to throw down some money on BetUS, so please DM me on Instagram, at MitchellRens365. Another guy that you guys should go ahead and DM is my man Harrison Graham. He's riding the struggle bus a little bit. He's 0-10 it's kind of impressive if I'm being 100% honest. So if you guys could, hit me up on IG, but definitely message Harrison Graham at HGrahamNFL because he needs some help on BetUS. And if you guys are looking to bet on any game this entire week, it's chatsports.com slash bet. We got some Tennessee Titans news and rumors to cover. Plus, maybe they could go out and sign some free agents on the offensive line. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because Taylor Lewan, who I think at one time was probably one of the best left tackles in the entire league, he got absolutely roasted against Chandler Jones in week one, was battling a knee injury, and then he looked like he was going to play in week two, then tweaked that knee injury, so he was unable to play in week two, and now he's questionable for week three as it stands. So if you've been watching the Titans, they need some help on that left side of that offense. Offensive line. So this begs this question. Who is the top free agent offensive lineman still out there on the market? Because there's some pretty good ones. There's no doubt about it. At the tackle position, at the guard position, left tackle, right tackle. Let me know who is the top free agent offensive lineman. The first name coming up here for the Titans, and the reason why he's ranked number three is because if you want to talk about overall talent at the tackle position, Mitchell Schwartz is probably number one. However, he was more of a right tackle. I shouldn't say more of. He was a right tackle with the Kansas City Chiefs. But if you're getting desperate, which maybe Tennessee is getting a little bit desperate, pick up the phone, give Schwartz a call, say, hey, man, are you healthy? How's that back doing? Could you potentially play left tackle? If Schwartz says, no, I'm not playing left tackle, or if he says, no, I'm not going to go ahead and play, or I can't play because of my back, then you could potentially pick up the phone and call the number two guy on my list here, which is Roderick Johnson. So Johnson... Another guy who you can put on the left side, you can put on the right side. I like that versatility. Now, none of these guys are even close to as good as Taylor Lewan. However, what you got right now, it ain't working. He's played in 28 games the past two seasons, 163 snaps at left tackle last year. And if you look at the PFF grades, 64.5 overall. Then you got 60.6 .6 pass blocking grade, 73.9 run blocking grade. But if I was Tennessee, the number one person I would call if you're looking for a left tackle is Russell Okun. Again, if you're talking about talent alone, he's the best left tackle out on the board. But just like Schwartz, he's got some injury histories. And he's played in only 13 games the past two seasons. Last year, he played 406 snaps at the left tackle position. But when he was on the field, a 73 overall grade of PFF, which is a very good grade, an 80.0 pass blocking grade, and then a 66.1 run blocking grade. If you are really worried that Taylor Lewan is not going to be healthy, maybe you go ahead and you try to get somebody like Russell Okun. But you know what? Taylor Lewan's not the only injury that the Titans are dealing with on the offensive line, especially on the left side. Roger Saffold, the offensive guard, their left guard, he left week two versus Seattle. He's dealing with a shoulder injury, and they don't know if he's going to be able to play. So if you don't have Lewan and you don't have Saffold, all I'm saying is, uh, Tannehill, you better watch your back, my man. So what we decided to do is not only give you guys the top offensive tackles, I wanted to go ahead and give you guys the top offensive guards that maybe probably more of the left guards that the Titans could go out and get. J.R. Sweezy, he's the first name that comes up to, to my mind. And if you're looking for average. That's kind of what JR is here, right? I mean, it's not a rip on him. It's just a fact. Now, he did play only 35 snaps at the left guard position, more of a right guard, but he, I, 
throughout his entire career, he's been able to show that he can go from left, that he can go from right. So maybe that's a name that they can at least keep in mind. Number two on my list here is Joe Dahl. Another great thing about Joe Dahl is he's versatile. He can play left guard. He can play center. He can play right guard. You can kind of move him all over the football field here, which I do think is kind of an interesting thing for Tennessee. But the overall grade, 57.4 on PFF, but 112 snaps at the left guard position. The number one person that I would call, though, if I was the Titans looking for a left guard, it's Nick Easton. Nick Easton, to me, is probably the best guard still out there on the market. He can play left. He can play right. A lot better as a run blocker, and I think if you're the Titans, that's the more important thing to look for. I know that you want to be able to throw the ball in today's NFL, but let's face it. If the Titans are going to win football games, it's going to be on the back of King Henry. So if you can block better in the running game, that to me is the most important thing. So what we gave here, guys, was the latest news rumors around the Titans. So here's my question. Should the Titans go out and sign an offensive lineman? I want you to go down in the comments section right now. If you're like, yes, type that Y for yes. If you say yes, be an overachiever and give me a name that you think that they should go out and get. If you're like, nope, this team's good, go ahead and type your N for no. Now, Chat Sports is one of the hardest working companies in the biz. And if you haven't already, go ahead and give us a follow on Instagram at Chat Sports. I'm not going to tell you what it is exactly, but we're going to be posting a pretty awesome deal either today or tomorrow. So I want you to go ahead and follow Chat Sports on Instagram at Chat Sports. That way you guys can see what it is. And if you're watching this live, I am going to be giving some shout outs to some people coming up here in just a little bit. Let's get into the latest Minnesota Vikings news here around Cameron Dancer. And I guess I should say this is probably a little bit more of a rumor. So apparently the 49ers, they called about trading or potentially trading for Dantzler a few days ago. And the reason why this is at least interesting to me is because anytime I hear trade, I'm like, okay, talk to me a little bit. So Jason Verrett, who went healthy, is one of the best corners in the entire league. Uh, towards ACL. And if you want to talk about a guy who's dealt with so many ACL injuries, Barrett's definitely one of them. Now, what's kind of interesting is the 49ers could potentially be looking for another cornerback because the guys that they got, Josh Norman, he won very good. And then Kirkpatrick as well, he didn't play well. And Dancer right now is the cornerback three on this team. So it could be interesting at least for the 49ers or maybe another team to pick up the phone and potentially go out and trade for Dancer. So what exactly are you going to get out of the former third round pick? I believe number 98 overall in the 2020 draft. He was pretty good last year as a rookie. 46 tackles, four pass breakups, two picks, one forced fumble. He played in 601 snaps. And what you're about to see right now are his 2020 PFF grades. The overall grade, 70.9. He was a 68.5 against the run D. And the coverage grade, 69.8. So what I thought was, okay, if the 49ers were interested a few days ago, could they potentially be interested again? So what I figured here is after having a solid rookie year, he's not really getting on the field that much now because of Patrick Peterson and Brashad Breeland. But what do you guys think? I want you to be the judge here. Who do you think wins this trade? The Minnesota Vikings get a 2022 third round pick. The San Francisco 49ers, they get Cameron Dantzler. Go down in the comments. Let me know. Type Vikings or 49ers. Who do you think wins this deal?